again we have an opportunity to join really join with ourselves we remove the obstacles and realize we can be peaceful become aware and being inspired by the awareness of dreaming the last couple of days that's that's very very helpful to become aware of dreaming of course because nothing can affect you if you know you're dreaming how can a dream be fearful or difficult in any way we can take a moment now and and go within just breathe feel feel your own presence the holy spirit's presence Again, acknowledge what is there, how you're feeling, how your body is feeling. You can name inside yourself your state of mind. And it can be just a feeling. Experience. There may be images or thoughts in your mind right now. You can gently remove the attention in these images, these thoughts. And let the deeper presence prevail. Breathe and feel your body again, how you feel in your body, in your stomach. Feel how you sit, how you wait. And then release any thoughts again. Let them pass like clouds. Presence of the spirit is all that matters. And it's right here. Right here. As you go within, if there are specific thoughts or images or feelings, you can acknowledge those.
and allow them to be released. We let go of control. friend here and wanted to have fun and we talking to him about the fun can only come from peace of mind and the deep self-love forgiveness and release of judgments. And support the mind here. with this freedom, with the true fund. We don't owe the world anything. We don't owe others to be a certain way for them. We owe ourselves and the world to release those beliefs. The pressure of being somebody. In the back of the course, you can find a section that's called how many teachers of God are needed to save the world? How many teachers of God are needed to save the world? The answer is one. In paragraph six says, oneness and sickness cannot coexist. God's teachers choose to look on dreams a while, for they have learned that all choices are made consciously with full awareness of their consequences. The dream says otherwise, but who would put his faith in dreams once they are recognized for what they are? Awareness of dreaming is the real function of God's teachers. Becoming aware
is your real function. Coming aware, this dream, this life you experience is your dream. It's actually a preferred choice of dream. And as I read, the dream says it is not preferred. It's not a preferred choice. It says often that you're a victim to it. And as part of this decision to dream is to forget that you're the dreamer. But a victim to some dream. The other night, I had some stomach ache in the evening. I felt like something felt a bit off. And I had a thought, gluten, gluten intolerance. And I went to bed. And I had a dream. I saw a basket of uh, delicious bread sliced up, thick slices. In this dream, I was hungry. And I thought, well, I can test. Someone said, there's wheat in this, in this bread, this wheat. And, and I thought, well, this would be a test. I took one of these fresh, freshly baked, it was thick slice, brown seeded bread. <laughs> it seemed really good. So I had one. And then I woke up. And this showed me there are no consequences to the dream. And even within the dream, there's no real cause and effect relationship. We made up that there is risks with gluten, for example, for some of us. We made that up and it seems to be even a common thing in the shared dream somehow that some people are sensitive. You know. But should we go in and try to fix the dream? Or can we just focus on waking up from the dream? Yes. We can. We, we don't have to fix the gluten intolerance or fill in the blank. What is your problem? All you need is to wake up from your dream. There was no consequence of, of eating bread in a dream. I didn't have any issues. But it is, the whole process is about becoming aware of, that it is a dream. Because when we believe it's real, it seems so serious. And there are so many different consequences to everything, movements, but there is nothing inherent, real, in these movements, in these things that are happening. People come and go as if by magic. It's another line in the course. People come and go as if by magic. And this magic is actually our thoughts. And our fearful thoughts project. 
of Arnold. world of bodies that can have different effect on us. So we want to work with our thoughts. We want to become so honest inside of ourselves. And find this inner incentive to look at all the dreams, to look at our own dream. To not run away, to not become too busy. Play the game as a dream figure. And we, we don't have to become like um, our own policeman or something, <laughs> or force ourselves to always practice this. In the beginning, we may only practice for short times every day. But it's fun to question the dream. I mean, that's what's fun. <laughs> And it can be done in any given instant. Every instant is a snapshot of your dream. So it's helpful to let go of opinions. That would be one of the first things it's helpful to let go of. Opinions and worldly knowledge at false cause and effect. Relationships, which is the whole world is all about that. False cause and effect relationships between things. One thing affect another. No, that's not true. And there is freedom in realizing this. And in this part where Jesus talks about the figures coming and going as if by magic, he says there is a plan behind appearances that doesn't change. The script is written. So this magic, this coming and going of images, figures, is seeming like things happening without your participation. Things show up, things happen. He's saying there, there is it, there is no um, chance involved it is a plan behind it and I think that is the dreamer of the dream coming back to oh there was a choice here in appearing in this dream as a dream figure there is a dreamer behind it, and that is your mind. That is you. Come back to that one. And it may take to step through fear. It may take to face some fear. But that's, it's worth it. Wouldn't you rather face some fear and be awake than dream? I think so.
I know. So. so in this session, we can lift up, we can, you can ask questions or you can lift up blocks that feel like hinders to your awakening. We can lift them up for healing. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. The Holy Spirit is the healer. All knowing, all loving, always available. And I think I'm I'm just a facilitator. We're facilitators. Can open the space. The Holy Spirit is in charge. The Holy Spirit heals the mind when we expose everything, anything. So at any time here, you can just raise your hand if you have something you'd like to lift up and join with us about. It is very, very good to join. And even if someone feels nervous about it, I encourage you to give yourself the opportunity. Sorry. I just I, I experienced something uh, that felt really flowing and guided about um, um, together with Peter finding a, an idea for something to give my parents, even though I decided not to give them anything, but then suddenly this came up. And first I couldn't find it, then there was this flow about finding it on the internet of a book. And uh, even though it was very difficult and, and then this morning, everything just felt so good and I felt so happy and it's just, and then this morning I got a, a, an email saying that they canceled it because, you know, it was in, um, in a secondhand book and so it was gone. And I just felt so disappointed. And, and I can see all my doubts coming up around, um, even though I know it's not a form or anything, but that, that's, it's just, it keeps popping up, um, this huge disappointment. Yeah. How about you write a poem about you wanting to give them a book and bring into the poem what the message in the book is that you want to give them? And maybe that's all they need. That would be a beautiful gift. A little letter of love with the gift you wanted to give. Because you're the gift. When you show up present, you're the present. Yeah, I'm aware it was not the book in itself. I don't even know the book. <laughs> it's just, Peter heard about it. None of us know the book, but it was just, it just felt, yeah, something for them. I would really trust that it was taken away for a reason. <laughs> you know, the victim to this world you know spirit is part of this yeah. To be. yeah that's what i really want to keep on to that thought i can see the old pattern of just feeling yeah deprived or something just really comes up it's uh... but it might be self-concept involved you're someone who wants to show up with a gift <laughs> That sounds good. Yeah. Practice being the gift and let it let the gift come through you. 
yeah, it's just it's this. I really, there's something about wanting to give or extend or something. And, but the old way, like, you know, everyone was inviting that it could be in a common gift or something. Praying, I just felt like it pff, flat. No, <laughs> not going to do that. Um, but I still this desire to give something. Yeah. 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 Ask with how, how love wants to be given through you. In this world, we, we have put too much value on form. Even more thing, you know. This is as the giver loses what he gives. It's just the thing in form. But through giving, you don't lose it. Yeah, and no, I, I was aware that I was, I, I had my focus on the form. I was aware it was not about the book, but the feeling that the, this feeling deprived was still there. Yeah. Yeah. I could feel that. Belief in deprivation, belief that something can go wrong. Belief that there is chance. Random things can happen randomly. It's just a belief. Be the gift. What's up? Hi. Hi. So I'm not really sure what to bring up, but I just know I want help. <laughs> so, and there, yeah, there's two things that came to me. One is um, how to best help to heal my 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 body and my 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 mind because I'm not um, back yet to being healthy and the last week was very yeah I don't want to go into the story but you know I didn't have my usual yeah I'm just not healthy yet <laughs> let's put it that way so how to approach it in the best possible way for me i mean i practice yeah meditation and 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 constantly wanting to help myself to be in the moment and be grateful for what i have and, and not focus on all the things that is not there and handing it over not dig into the form, you know, not trying to fix all the symptoms. And um, yeah, I just wanted to ask for your guidance, guys, because it's, I mean, it's been so helpful. I mean, I learned so much. I let go of so many things, so many patterns of thinking and being since this happened to me three, a bit more, three years ago. So I'm very grateful overall and i'm also impatient a little bit sometimes because i want to be able to function you know be in the world and, and love it <laughs> yeah and, and i guess thought, have you thought of the message in what happened like if nothing just happens by itself what yeah, what was there? Why did this happen? I think it happened because even though I say I want to believe in the good and do the good and 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 I believe it happened because I I, I it was just like 
stop. You can't do it this old way. So it was a message of love in, in a way. So that was one thing. So I, I, because I can't do things in the old way anymore. <laughs> and of course I don't want to either. So that's one of the messages. And also for me to wake up, I think. Yeah, and, and one more thing also that I, I'm, I'm seeing is when things are taken away from me, like being able to work or like a year or two ago and yeah, not being able to hang out with people the same way that one of the lessons is also to, to um, go within and, and see that I can be happy when things fall away that I think I need. Yeah. So that's, that's been a big one. But then there is something still that is hard. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Mm. And I don't know what it is. I do know some stuff. I know I, I'm not as happy as I want to be. No. So it is like a dark spot or it's like when this happens, the, the pain or the sickness or... I think in those experiences, it's like a dark, this darkness. It's like the private world caves in. <laughs> like maybe you feel alone when you have the, I'm, I'm not sure what your symptoms are, but something painful last week and something recurring. Yeah. So did you ask me what, what the dark spot is when, when it occurs. You're aware. You're aware of, or if something comes to your mind now when we bring this up, someone or something. Funny enough, just when you ask me this now, I have this really weird and strong image that I'm so, angry actually that I felt like throwing the whole table outside through the window. So that's what came up. Out of nowhere. <laughs> Fire of the whole thing. <sighs> Mm -hmm. I'm struggling and trying and how to sort of support myself in this world. But mostly not tired of the world, mostly just tired of how I approach it actually and, and the struggle. Which I know at times is completely not there but now it's here and I'm tired of and angry at things not working out for me yet the birds was are coming in by our windows, like right as you're talking, <laughs> one in that window, one, and it literally love... like two up and down. Like you've never seen. Them. I love them. I speak to them every day when they come. Now, oh hello, are you here? <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, that's the symbol of no care. They don't feel responsible. Exactly. 
you know, this image keeps coming back, me throwing stuff out the window. <laughs> so angry at myself, mostly, I think, or the whole thing. There is a longing to surrender. Yes. Yeah. And I feel like that is your will in alignment with spirit or with the universe, a desire to surrender. Mm -hmm. So we even can have a prayer about, hey, give, give me some specifics, Holy Spirit. Show me what that looks like. So I think the anger and the rage is the anger. That it's such a heavy personal responsibility yeah. to hold up this dream world, this person, this family. Yeah. I feel different now. It's like I feel more relaxed and taller at the same time. <laughs> Weird. It's nice. Yeah. And just allow that state and, and stay in the state. And that is like a prayer. Okay. You want to surrender. Specific. Yes, yeah. showing you for mm -hmm. yeah, the Holy Spirit or whatever it love itself to ask to show me specifics. Yeah, to show you what your next step is. Yeah. And I hear very clearly this was this was the next step now. <laughs> Just <laughs> this. Yeah. The temptation is to I can see that it, I would I want to know, you know, what is the next step and, and so I can <laughs> go go and fix it in form. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, but to stay here is is so much more peaceful. You know. Thank you so much. Okay, next we can go to you. <clears throat> Hello, hi. 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 Um, I just want to share that the last week I experienced a lot of negativity. Um, I don't want to really go into details, but like, and it's more like a stories at the moment than actual experience, but it reflected or it came into my relationship as well and yesterday evening there was like a a real down point <clears throat> um on that um the workplace is quite conflicted um and uh, this week a few times came up why what am i doing here what am i doing here um and but there appeared to be an answer coming through on the other hand side, and I will be very honest, I'm also not sure what I'm doing here. Um, because I feel I'm kind of caught. I'm not really making a decision. I'm not happy with what I'm doing and how I live my life. But on the other hand side, I'm not ready to give it up. And um, so I really don't know. I'm going to leave it at that. 
Yeah. It sounds like a prayer. It sounds like a strong prayer to to make it obvious for Holy Spirit to make your next steps obvious. And... I mean, in fact, it couldn't be more obvious, right? I mean, it couldn't be more obvious, but I'm still holding on. And it has been very obvious for quite a while, I think. But I'm still holding on and I still see value in it, you know? It's difficult because I still see, I even feel love in it, right? Well, at least I think it is. So you're saying you're seeing obvious guidance, but you're holding on to something else. Is that what you're seeing? I'm seeing that I'm not comfortable with the way I'm living my life. And I have been living my life. And there has been very clear guidance for a long time to just let it just let it be and 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 find another way. Like for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And I'm I don't know why. I mean, in the past I re I recall why I Probably I wanted to impress some people. Probably I wanted to please some people. Um, in the meantime, I mean, the reason why I'm holding on now is really to like please myself, holding on to a dream, right? Holding on to a dream. It's what you said initially. Holding on to a life that I feel maybe that's the right way. I mean, not, actually nothing wrong with that. I'm not sure. I really don't know. That's why how I'm conflicted. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The conviction to take a step, you know, needs to come from yeah. within. And right, but you know, I mean, it's also like it would be like I I, I could take a small backpack and my shoes, and I really don't have anything. Right. I mean. What am I going to do if I don't have a job anymore? Right? Um, Some of us gather in communities. Yeah, I'm aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, it, it was when I took a step, you know, back in 2006, 18 years ago. Um, it was extremely terrifying. It felt like going, take a step into nowhere, not knowing where it would lead me, leaving all the safety nets behind, such as salary or income, a house, family. It was the most scary thing. But there was also this feeling, well, I cannot, cannot continue playing a game, being this woman, trying to manage, keeping it up. I just felt like, felt like so false. Like every conversation I had, every encounter I had, the university with other people just felt like I wasn't there. I wasn't, it wasn't me. I couldn't be in that. Even world. my wife, even my wife said yesterday, she said, you are not yourself anymore. I want you back. Where are you? And I realize I'm not. I'm not. I mean, in varying degrees, but I realize I'm not. So the monk, the the inner monk is calling you. The the part of you that really just wants the experience of God. And I'm actually not really scared. I mean, I'm scared of losing of losing the relationship. I'm scared of delaying because you know I've been traveling so much for 20 years right now. And I'm 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 worried about delaying a home, if that makes sense because I, I don't have one and I really want one. And um, I know- This is well, something- I, I, The conflicting wishes in the mind. Yeah. Because it seems if you think you need a home, or you think you want a home, if that's a goal, yeah, you're gonna think that it has a cost. You're gonna have to spend time 
working. It's the future yes. dream. Yeah. Right. So I would I would encourage you to look at that dream of having a, a home. Right. Because home 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 isn't a place. It can't be I'm aware. A there is a an, a part of me that is aware of that. Yeah. That's where the conflict comes in. That's yeah. why. I think in the course, it's just somewhere once you've seen just a part of it, the decision is clear anyway. It's just a matter of time, right? I can delay. Yeah. Yeah. So let me try and delay it. <laughs> well, I'm your cheerleader for, you know, it's okay to take steps. I think I'm a living example there too. It's okay to, to take the steps for your spiritual awakening. Because like that knock, knocking on your door won't stop. <laughs> so it is a matter of time. And, and it hasn't stopped. I mean, it's going. it's been going on for, I don't know how many years. So it's yes. <clears throat> also to allow yourself to gently look at the fear and release the fear to the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're not alone. Thank you. Vanessa. Yeah, um talking about taking steps. Would you like to to explore something with you and release or whatever is is here. And um and some time time ago I had this I had this strong feeling to go to the monastery in Utah and was like I felt the joy of I don't know I cannot explain actually but I, I felt this calling just to go there. And yeah, I, you know, I was trying to resist, to push, say, oh, there are a lot of steps and it's difficult and so on. I don't have money and, but kept coming, you know, like step by step, talk with this person, talk with this person. And then I share, and my last, last step was like sharing on, on Facebook page, my, you know, like, oh, hi everyone, how'd you like to ask for support? And only two people, not only, but was really a gift to people and uh, send me support. But what I would like to talk about, because I could feel like, I, I could see like, I, I, I had so much expectation, the way, how it should look like. And a lot of, you know, I felt abandonment, this feeling from my, when I was a child, like I have no support. And even now I can feel this is so strong in my mind. Mm. Let's stay with that feeling. And so stay with a moment here with feeling abandoned, nobody cares. And we can within this joining, there is a deep care. As you're looking at this um, exposing this feeling. This is the monastery. This very moment. This is what you want. It was just thought of being a place in the future, which may or may not happen. But this is it. The rich, richness of this love and this connection. To spirit. I was finished so like I was inside this cloud, you know, with a lot of feelings and I was praying and praying and said I, I felt I had the feeling that I lost my, my joy because I start to think too much about this and what I'm gonna do because I was feeling like why did I have this this feeling to go there? If it's not gonna happen, maybe I don't know. 
and and then I was feeling so unhappy. It was like, Jesus, please help me. And then, then this song that it's a, a song came to my mind. I'm not gonna play here, but I just wanna say the name because um, it was so so helpful for me. And maybe if someone feels to to listen afterwards, it's called Find Me. It's a really, really deep song. Then this song came to my mind and I start to listen. And it says, you know, what I want is your love. And my heart just opened up again. Like I said, oh, it was kind of relieved. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I just want to feel your love, you know. <laughs> yeah, even though the thoughts, like the preoccupation or whatever, uh, keep calm. But I could feel this kind of miracle, you not know, just Jesus show me that what a we want, as you said, when I I wanna feel your love, I wanna feel your joy, no matter where I where I am actually. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and then um yeah, but I would, I just felt to share it because um I could see, you know, this there is your sadness and this yeah. And then, yeah, mm. this feeling of uh, feel small. I feel yeah, it is so deep in my mind. This feeling of I'm taking my steps. You know, I went to apply for job yesterday. I'm I'm doing everything that I can. Just it's not so much about this, maybe. But it's um, this sadness, this, this belief in, in abandonment is so, it's so deep in me. It makes me feel so, so small, really. Yeah. It's like you forget that you're a miracle worker and that Jesus loves to be with you now. Okay, like you forgot how much you love Jesus. Yeah. That it became so serious. Like the symbol of spirituality, the monastery became more important than you. Than <laughs> you be united now. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I think. Oh, wow, this got the <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. This, uh, these uh, words came to me once. The symbol of, or, um, yeah, the symbol of love is important, but not the form of its expression. Mm. The experience of love is where meaning is, not the form of its expression. Let the form flow, let the form be given, let the form be. Oh, 
the Very content. Simple. That's mm. the content of the listening project. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Matthew. Good morning. Good morning. Oh. Yeah, I just I really want to just um show up and just be seen and just be heard. Because I know sometimes when you know I hear people expressing and and just this, this joining and there seems to be a lot of people here, I, part of me just wants to just not be here and be hidden and be and not be heard. So I just felt, I felt Jesus prompting me very, very strongly to just to speak, you know. It was one of those feelings that I couldn't refuse, if you know what I mean. <laughs> like it was an offer I couldn't refuse. <laughs> um, so, yeah, thank you, Jesus, for that. <laughs> it's good um, when Jesus promised you to say hi. It's nice to follow <laughs> yeah. yeah always <sighs> yeah i don't really have much mainly it was just to show up here and be seen and just speak and yeah it feels good <laughs> yeah. so, thank you thank you <laughs> love you, <laughs> love you. Love you too. We had speaker view, so we didn't see if anybody else raised their hand. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I'm aware that now I'm I'm uh, really observing my thoughts and my judgments. That I'm like kind of uh, like every thought I have is like oh, but that's kind of an illusion. So I'm getting kind of crazy about all this. Like okay. every single thing I think, oh, yeah, but in fact, it's not true. So so it's <laughs> like everything is disappearing or I'm like questioning everything. Um, yeah, so that's, it's, um, yeah, I don't know how to describe it, but it's, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Mm. yeah it's still okay to speak no i mean mm. yeah, there is a specific topic it's okay to to go with it because yeah the intellect may sometimes get involved and say well that's not real that's just illusion but if the emotions are still unresolved then it's better to talk talk it mm. through yeah yeah, was there a specific topic that you were thinking about? Yeah, no, it's more like every small thing I think is like, then I re reflect like, oh, it's not true, and but it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of, so I don't know anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, what to think, what to reflect. Um, so it makes me sad somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sad is the emotion that comes up. Is it mixed with happiness? Too? Uh, for a moment, not. I feel some something joyful uh, in this process. <laughs> no, I don't feel it now. Mm. Yeah, it's like everything is going to disappear somehow. Um, 
Yeah, and before coming here, that was kind of the fear that I had, like, oh, but if I kind of go there, then everything is going to disappear, or like, you know, because nothing is true, it's all a dream. Um, yeah, it's kind of yeah. confusing. For example, yesterday evening, there was like, when I came out, the house like it was this amazing smell of the uh, blossoms wow well, and it was um yeah it was amazing but then i remember you saying the more in the morning like oh yeah the smell of the cat oh yeah it was kind of a judgment and i thought like oh yeah so this smell of a blossom is also a judgment so now like oh it's yeah yeah yeah, but everything is a symbol in the reflection. So maybe there was a bit of a I love I love you in the blossom smell. Spirits and the you know, most beautiful fragrance. But it's 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 good, you you're aware that it's judgment, but it's this fear of loss. It's this fear, belief in sacrifice. Now, while you're here, you may enjoy reading about that in the course. It's it's very strong belief in the mind. The belief in sacrifice. You have to give up something. And that's where the sadness comes from. That something has to be given up for God. And there is a... Um, a section called the development of trust and he really describes it well there it's in in the back of the course you might want to read that and you know because it describes this process this belief in having to give up everything yeah. illusion i have to give it up and the thing is you know the holy spirit will give you back whatever is useful, whatever is helpful for your healing, for your awakening, when you give over everything, when you give up like the little things you were describing, the little thoughts, you know, whatever is still useful for you, for your healing, will come back. But the fear of loss needs to be seen and looked at. I feel a lot of joy. I feel that you're on the doorstep. Mm -hmm. Because this is, first it feels like is this the giving up of everything? And it's just to keep going with that. Give, give it over. Every thought, give it over to Holy Spirit. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, the spirit is just loving. I love you kind of message all the time, you know. Spirit is loving you. Thank you. Thank you. I think I don't know. I think we may finish. I I did see your hand just then, Peter, just at the end. Yeah. Is it? Uh, you want to share something? You want to talk? <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to say how grateful I am and I just found every share was just beautiful and stunning and it just opened me right up and I yeah and I just 
yeah, I just wanted to say, I just wanted to show up, which was said earlier. And, and I could feel I was feeling ashamed of just coming forward. So I just wanted to say that just, it was incredible. I just felt so resonant with just so much that was shared. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining in here today. Yeah. You're in our hearts. Always. Heart full of love. <laughs> Heart of light, yeah. <laughs> you. <laughs> we'll see you all again soon